Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog, and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast uh, on YouTube and on Rumble. And this week, we started uploading our podcasts onto Spotify. So welcome to those who access the podcast through Spotify. Today, we continue in our study of the book of Romans. We're chapter 12 verses 14 through 16, which reads, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. That's Romans chapter 12, verses 14 through 16. Today we continue our study of the last section in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12 through 16. In this section, the Apostle Paul has given us a glimpse of what it looks like to be a servant. Whereas in Romans chapter 12 verses 3 through 13, Paul's commands are on how believers in Christ should relate to one another. In Romans chapter 12, verses 14 through chapter 13, verse 7, his commands concern how believers in Christ should relate to the world or to unbelievers. The life of the servant is the goal of the believer in Christ. One might think that today's passage is the grouping of disconnected verses, but that is a mistake. For, you see... These verses lift up the concept of coming to the end of the self-life. These attributes that the Apostle Paul accentuates in this last section of Romans reflect the disposition of the servant. Selflessness is the thread that ties all these verses together. In verse 14 of today's passage, we read, Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Taking the root of the Lord is always hard on and contrary to the flesh or the sinful desires that are yet within us, even though we have been forgiven our sin. The servant of the Lord blesses those who persecute or curse him. The word bless is the Greek word from which we get our English word eulogy, which are the good words spoken in remembrance of a person who has died. The Roman culture and environment made it quite difficult for the believer in Christ during the first century. The word persecute comes from the Greek word which means to pursue or to chase away. Over time, it came to mean to harass or to treat in an evil manner. In the New Testament, it is used of inflicting suffering on people who hold beliefs that are different. Hence, the need to bless those who render persecution. When we walk with the Lord, We must not be surprised by the persecution that comes from the world. Our fallen default mode always leads us to try to control that which we do not understand. But when we come to know the God who longs to shed abroad his love in our hearts, we are positioned to realize the reality of this command in a given moment in our lives. As believers in Christ, we are equipped to do the impossible, to love our enemies. We can only bless our persecutors when we are more concerned about their eternal welfare than we are about our suffering. This is the depth that the culture of God brings to the soul of those humble enough to be defined by the God of the Bible. In verse 15 of today's passage, we read, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Once we have entered into a personal relationship with the Lord, we are positioned to go from one spectrum to the other. 
from rejoicing to weeping. The main thought accentuated here is that we have the heart of the Lord. This is the characteristic of the one who has come to know the Lord for himself and who walks with him daily. When the disposition of those we find ourselves with enables us to adjust from one end of the spectrum to the other, we demonstrate that we are being defined by the one who went through hell to make us citizens of his heaven. In verse 16 of today's passage, we read, Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. This verse means that we are to think about everybody equally. It is a command to not be a respecter of persons. It means to have a heart for everyone, just like the Lord Jesus when he came to this earth. With the Lord in his culture, there's no place for aristocracy among his people. God expects us to be at home with the lowly as well as with the elite. The word humble means to get down on the ground with the lowly. It doesn't mean we ignore those who are in high positions. It means we don't pursue them only. It means we long to see everyone right with their creator. This is what the Lord Jesus did with the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. When the religious leaders brought her to the Lord in John chapter 8, while he was teaching in the temple, they threw her at his feet. It was then that the Lord Jesus stooped. He had been sitting, but he changed his posture from sitting to stooping. You see, he stooped in order to communicate. This was why he came to lift up the condemned. In addition, we cannot be wise in our own understanding of life. For when we do, we fail to be defined by the God of the Bible. We must be careful not to think that everything begins and ends with us. It was Solomon who wrote those very instructive words in Proverbs. Lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.